now we're going to talk to Eric Griego. He's running in New Mexico's first district for Congress. Uh, Eric is PCCC endorsed candidate. Damn. How are you doing, Eric? Doing great. How are you? Uh, lovely. You're also endorsed by uh, Raul Grijalva, so I get a sense that you're an actual progressive, uh, which is a pleasure. That's what they're telling me. That's what they're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to put that uh, to the test, actually, okay? Because, okay. Uh, Eric, my uh, sense of Congress, uh, where you're trying to go, is that the problem isn't the Republicans. The Republicans are clear. Uh, they're on the side of the rich, and they don't make no bones about it. Spencer Backus of uh, Alabama says, we're here to serve the banks. That's it. Period. End of discussion. Oftentimes, the problem is uh, Democrats. So, for example, today we covered on the story, uh, story on the new, uh, show about the super committee and how the Democrats have proposed to extend the tax cuts for the rich indefinitely. So, if you're in Congress, what do you do with a problem like that? Well, you got to push back. I mean, I think the, the problem with a lot of our guys is there's this sort of hunger to, to negotiate uh, at any cost, you know, to compromise at any cost. And there's some, some values you got to have that just are frankly non negotiable. I mean, uh, to say that the, uh, the trade off is somehow between uh, taxing the super wealthy or asking, you know, the biggest, most profitable corporations in the world and in the country to. to to pay their fair share and to somehow say that's one option versus asking seniors who've worked their whole lives, you know, to take a to take to, to forego a cost of living increase or to wait till they're seventy to retire. I mean it's an absolute false choice. And I think that that's what we have to call not just uh the the right wing on and the, the Republicans on. We gotta call sometimes we gotta call some people on our own party on. And so, you know, I'm in a race with a blue dog who you know, uh, you know, people seem to sort of uh, uh, fancy themselves as being able to sort of work across the lines and, you know, be, be pragmatic and kind of go along to get along. And I think sometimes, yeah, but you need our leaders. You need people who stand for something. And um, there's no way I would vote for uh, uh, taking a dime out of Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. And the reason is these are investments. These are compacts that we as a community have with each other. And... Uh, meanwhile, to say that the, the quote unquote job creators, you know, the, the uber rich and the, and the multinationals that don't have any real allegiance to, to, to the American, you know, working folks, the middle class folks, should somehow be spared any pain, um, I think is just, it's un American. It's, it's absurd. So, Eric, the problem, though, is if you get into Congress, right? Because, look, I know it's a hard question, and I'm not sure I have a good answer to it. But if you're in Congress, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to come and say, hey, listen, you've got to play ball, okay? You're not going to get the committee leadership. You're not going to get on the committee you want unless you have, you know, some degree of comedy, at least within the Democratic Party. And from time to time, part of that comedy will be they'll come to you and they'll say, we need you to vote on this great compromise that we have with the Republicans. Don't be so unreasonable, Greg, right? What do you do there? Do you say, all right, well, I'm not going to go on that committee that I want? Uh because I got to call out Senator Baucus or Representative Hoyer because I think that they're selling people out. Can you really do that? Well, I think there's a difference between sort of calling people out personally and saying, you know, uh, Danny's got it wrong or, you know, whomever. The president's, you know, uh, you know uh, is, is com completely folding and, and saying, look, this is what we say we believe. Um, as Democrats, and one one of our bedrock sort of principles is that we believe in something called the public good, in the common good, and we're not going to throw seniors under the bus. We're not going to throw disabled and poor folks under the bus, and that's non-negotiable. If you want to talk about um, <clears throat> whether whether we should uh, uh, close um, certain uh, tax tax breaks or tax loopholes for certain industries um, that perhaps are, are not as profitable as others, those are things you can talk about. But to say that, look, you know, any tax increases for people who are in the 1% or in the top 2% millionaires in this country, then that's just, you know, that's just something you got to draw the line on. And, you know, the beauty of having been in these fights at the state level, I'm a state senator, and having sponsored legislation that said, you know, 250 plus, you got to give up the tax cuts because we gave similar tax cuts to to super wealthy folks in New Mexico. And it doesn't take a lot to be super wealthy. I mean, you're, you're making over a quarter million in New Mexico. You're in the top three percent of folks. So, 
Um, so you can do it in a way that reminds people of their values and what we say we believe in, and you can stand with other people. And by the way, there's a lot you can do behind the scenes to sort of really push your own folks to spine up a little bit, as Ed Schultz would say, you know. Um, and then the last thing you can do is even as a matter of negotiation, you know, Jenk, is as a matter of just driving the best bargain for the working people of this country, sometimes you need people who will set some tougher negotiating parameters, right? And if me being a boy for Raul Grijalva or whoever, uh, Bernie Sanders wants to stand up and say, this is what we believe, and it gives us the opportunity to get a better deal, even if you have to compromise at the end of the day and it's a better deal for the, for the American people, I still think, you know, in my own political life, I've had to take some of those shots for being the guy who isn't willing to fold. But even even if even if others are, at least we have that we get a better deal for working people than just simply, you know, let's start out in the middle and work our way to the right, which is where we've sort of been the last few years. You know, Eric, uh, I know that uh, you got some help from the government in that you participated in the Head Start program when you were a kid. What's your experience there? Uh, do you think that, you know, when the Republicans say the government can never help, uh, my guess is that that's outside your experience? You know, I just, I think it's a fallacy. I think, you know, um, we would not be where we are as Americans, and frankly, our system wouldn't be uh, functioning if we hadn't. Uh, acknowledged and said, look, you know, seniors are in, 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 in dire poverty, and so we created Social Security. The, uh, the economy was tanking after the, and during the Great Depression, and we said we need massive uh, public investment in rebuilding our infrastructure, including schools. We realized that, that no one was going to succeed if we didn't have a universal public education, so we, we built that. Um, we realized seniors were not getting health care, and they were having, you know, these really terrible uh, sort of health situations, so we created Medicare. Medicare. We realized the poor and the disabled and other folks weren't getting health care, so we created Medicaid. We realized kids and most of brain development and, and a lot of success in life happens in those first few years, and so we, so we created, you know, a uh, head start. And so kids like me, you know, I grew up in a, in a single-parent family, four kids, predominantly Hispanic, poor neighborhood, if you just believe the statistics, I should be, you know, I should be behind bars. Uh, a lot of my friends and, and people I grew up with, with, but people, my mother took the initiative. She went back to work. She put me in a program that was safe to help me learn to read and write. I was invested in. I, I worked hard in public school. I got free lunch. I got free breakfast. I went to public universities. And you know what? I have paid thousands of dollars in taxes for other kids behind me who are also given the opportunity to, to not just work hard, but to have some opportunities to succeed, they too can succeed, and they too will be paying it back at some point to to kids behind them. That's the that's what we believe as Americans that if we're in this together, then we have to all reinvest in each other and reinvest in the next generation. And there's a whole stream of thought on the right that really is this sort of law of the jungle, you know, dog eat dog, every man for himself, every corporation for himself, every millionaire for himself. And we need people who are going to push back on that, because I don't think that's what we believe as Americans, and I don't think that's what the American dream is about. It, Eric, it seems like you've learned nothing from Wall Street. Uh, the Wall Street <clears throat> motto is, look, you take whatever you want from the government, and then you tell everybody to stick it, okay, and that you're going to keep all the money and keep all the bonuses. God, it's like you're not paying attention. So, <laughs> now look, I know you've spoken out in favor of Occupy Wall Street. Mayor Bloomberg just shut down... Zuccotti Park. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, I, I, I'm 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 very very disappointed in the mayor. Um, you know, look, this country, all of the major movements from from um, the civil rights movement to uh, you know the, the 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 worker rights movement to to the voting rights movement have all been around peaceful civil uh, protests and people sort of having their voices heard. And guess what? We've, you know, there have been lots of occupying and people sort of collectively staying and sort of making a statement. And so, so to use these, these sort of these pretexts of that you got to, you know, promote public safety, those folks weren't hurting anyone any more than anything in an average day in New York, you know, in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, people, uh, any petty crimes or whatever. But, you know, to sort of take such a hard line, um, I think, was an overreaction. I think it's disappointing. Yeah, so I do think, you, you know, think Mayor Bloomberg was full of it when he's talking about fire hazards and how, and then when he kept the press out, he said, uh, I just did it to protect the press. 
Uh, was he full of it? I think he is full of it. I think he is full of it because, you know, I've been in local government. I've been a city councilman. I was there when the first uh, Iraq protests were happening, and our own mayor, um, you know, cracked down on them pretty hard. And it was it was unnecessary. It was un-American. It was against, the, you know, it was against our right to free speech and to, for, to, for, to free assembly in this country. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights should stand for something. And, you know, there, were no, there was no murdering going on. There was no raping and pillaging going on. These were people who were trying to make a statement and... Uh, and as I said, the average day in New York uh, is probably more dangerous than any other, anything that was going on in that park. Uh, so, you know, I love New York, but I, I'm very disappointed in the mayor, and I'm very disappointed in the other people around the country who are trying to make this movement out to be some sort of subversive, uh, dangerous movement. And sadly, it's the same things we heard about uh, some of the demonstrations that uh, Martin Luther King was involved in, and that Cesar Chavez was involved in, and, and that the women who, who the women who led the suffrage movement were were involved in. Same kind of you know, fear. Oh, we got to protect average Joe. And the truth is, these are these are folks who just want to make change, and they're they're exercising their constitutional right. And I think it's a, I think it's very disappointing that a that a that a mayor of a major city doesn't understand what the, what the uh, what the Bill of Rights and, and the freedom of, uh, and the and the Constitution is about. All right, Eric Griego, strong progressive, running for Congress in 2012. New Mexico 1st District. Website is griegoforcongress.com, which is fairly logical. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on The Young Turks. Really appreciated hearing you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity.